Well, you know, this is, this is one of the things about social media that is also, I think, so difficult to wrap your mind around. You know, I remember when I worked at Google, one of the things that I know, like, you know, my family and friends had a hard time understanding was that when they search for something, they would see one thing. And if I search for the same thing, I might not see the same thing. So the fact that like digital technology personalizes to you Mm -hmm. means that again, uh, this is yes, the filter bubble, but the filter bubble is a great sort of label. That is a suitcase word that, you know, or a phrase that you have to unpack to really understand like what it means. And so if I were to log into your social media, not only would I find it probably very banal, just as you would find mine very banal, because it's not your stuff that, you know, you're seeing, you're seeing my stuff, but you also don't have a sense for the full spectrum of experiences that people have within social media. So for example, you know, I probably have, I would say that my Twitter inbox direct messages is almost become more active than my email inbox. Now you were just born on social media back in August. So for you to imagine switching your email activities, and I presume you do email a lot, I I could be wrong, but Mm -hmm. you know, over to a social media platform or to messaging just might be like mind blowing. And yet increasingly I do a lot more of messaging to people through messaging apps, you know, whether it's WhatsApp or all of, I'm on all of them. So that's another aspect of this kind of rarefied experience that each of us has and brings to our social media um, uh, evaluation that I think makes it hard for us to have a coherent conversation about the same things. So when you're a social media skeptic, or if you're complaining about social media, it's interesting if you reveal your bias of what your own experience is like and how you might've screwed yourself over because actually there might be the features or the settings that you're looking for or the controls that you need to create a really positive experience. But if you haven't taken the time to learn about them and you just kind of like complain, well, then you're actually deferring and giving up a lot of your sort of sovereignty to the platforms. And I guess that's what I find is so challenging about designing social software is that a lot of these platforms have a lot of the functionality that people are constantly asking for, but people don't make use of them. And, uh, you know, to draw another example, back in uh, 2007 to 2009, I was working on decentralizing social networks and we produced a bunch of technologies, one of which was something called OpenID. And the idea of OpenID was that rather than using Apple or Google or, you know, Facebook as your identity provider, you could actually set up your own website and that could be used as the way that you authenticate yourself. But we were just too early in the evolution of social media for people to understand the importance of having a decentralized social web. And so instead, Facebook just like took over and Facebook Connect showed up all over the place. And so we find ourselves now in this battle between these major players Mm -hmm. to own identity because in the beginning, people weren't able or ready to understand the 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 threat of not having choice and what that would have felt like. And so now we're living in that future and it's like, well, you know, we tried to warn you, but I guess, I guess it wasn't time yet. So yeah. 